वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ पी एम पी मास्टरी सीरीज दिस एपिसोड इज ऑल अबाउट स्कोप टाइम ऑफ ट्वेंटी मिनट्स सो वी हैव कवर्ड सो फार एजाइल स्क्रम स्टेक होल्डर कम्युनिकेशन टीम रिस्क क्वालिटी प्रिक्योरमेंट सो मच वी हैव कवर्ड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्टेंट ऑफ पी एम पी सो इफ यू हैव एंड गोन थ्रू दैम आई डू रिकमेंड हैव अ लुक at this videos these mastery series they are very important if you are new please do subscribe so that i can make more videos the bigger the channel grow it gives me motivation that now we are talking to more people and do share it with this so that you can learn more and more people can learn my belief is each one teach one so let's talk about scope so in order to understand scope let me take back to the basics of pmp we make need assessment then we make business case benefit management plan both of these are business document those we don't change then happen initiation planning execution monitoring control and closing these are five process group and then it goes to operation this is called project life cycle this is called complete life cycle or product life cycle so what we are going to do in order to make scope based line that is what is the scope of the project that is our goal to make scope based line and the scope based line is made through scope management plan what we are going to do since we know that product life cycle has project life cycle as a part of it i can also put it this if this is product this is project i'm going to use requirement management plan to collect all the requirement and then filter them out what are product requirement what are project requirement okay so i'm going to make requirement management plan so how do i collect the requirement it goes to the same place how do we identify stakeholder how do we identify the risk put in the chat box how do we do that so we discussed expert judgment focus group we use ops ef right ops ef every single thing that we do to identify the requirements stakeholder is all the same in addition to that we can also use prototype for example yeah let's see i want to make the airports the first one will be prototype it can be actual uh, airports or it can be a design of that right that is basically prototype or also known as minimum viable product you can make it you can also use context diagram to collect the requirements we are trying to get the requirements collect the requirements context diagram basically look what are the inputs what are the outputs how things are linked into that For example, let's say we are using ATM machine. If it is an ATM machine, how will you put the money, get out the money? How it is connected to bank? All the ways it is connected, how the contacts work, every single thing help us to get the requirement. So now we have collected the requirement using all these techniques. These requirements are put back into requirement traceability matrix. a very important uh, document it will have all the details related to requirement who asked the requirement what is the purpose of this requirement how it is connected to project how it is connected to product what is the priority of that every single detail will be present in the requirement traceability matrix you can consider it more of a excel big excel file having all the details about the product we'll also have a sub file just like we made rasi and ram requirement documentation requirement documentation basically is a subset of this i would say just for understanding what is functional requirement non functional requirement what are the solution requirement if you are moving from one place to the transition requirement solution requirement so you have collected use the requirement management plan that will tell you how to basically collect all the requirements and then you document them in requirement traceability and requirement documentation now we have all the requirements now we are going to use scope management plan that will tell how to basically filter it out how to make the scope 
varit fiber scope and things of those nature management plan right what we will do i'll make a funnel so let's say all the requirements in the requirement documentation it goes there right all the requirements are the part of it okay we will use scope filter using scope management plan right we will use scope filter using scope management plan filter is scope management plan like what is inside the scope what is outside the scope now this filter can be uh, what is included in the product what is not included in the product uh, important thing priority system mosco whatever it is right you collect the requirement you put the scope management plan filter and here you get pss the, one of the most important thing in the project the project scope statement project scope statement consists of every single thing that must be present in the project okay scope project scope statement will have what is in the project what is in project and anything that is not included in the project scope statement is not the part of the project that is such a important document detailed document acha many people get confused between project scope statement and project charter project charter is a high level thing just having the scope project scope statement will have in depth every single thing about that okay now we have project scope statement assumption constraint and everything now using the project scope statement lee lambarty when i interviewed him uh, the founder of pmp i'll put the interview here he said two things a project manager should know one is project scope statement second is work uh, the first thing is work breakdown structure the second thing is we are going to discuss in the scheduling topic so we are going to do the first thing so let's say our project is burj khalifa right so we will take the project and we'll divide it into small manageable part this is called wbs work breakdown structure taking down the work and making dividing it into small manageable parts let's go to the next page this one okay so let's say the page has served its purpose okay so wbs let's say burj khalifa electrical work mechanical work civil work whatever the works plumbing work okay then it will divide it further right and if we divide it further you get the wbs structure if i name it let's say this is 1 1.1 we can start with 1.0 1.2 1.3 1.4 i divided it further 1.3.1 1.3.2 1.3.3 this is further divided 2.1 this is lowest part is called work package this highest part is called control account and in between any level is called planning package now this entire thing is called wbs and we will have a dictionary that will explain what does all of these control accounts work package planning package mean that is called wbs dictionary wbs dictionary right now wbs dictionary has all the detailed information about dependencies things of those nature we will discuss in scheduling topic what are the dependencies these number number 1. if i say 1.3.2.2 they are known as code of account okay like in wbs dictionary will have numbers what does these number means the lowest part is called work package the smallest part that you can work on as a rule work package should be minimum of 8 hours maximum 80 hours not more than that that's kind of a rule of thumb it can be more but that's kind of a rule of thumb okay control account is what basically management is more concerned they are not going to ask you what is happening in 1.3.2.1 they are going to ask you what is happening at mechanical work civil work plumbing work things of those nature okay and planning package is more the planning team use work package actually execution team use so we have project scope statement if i put it here project scope statement we have wbs wbs dictionary code of account it goes to sponsor once it is approved it is called scope baseline now your scope has been baseline what does that mean this means now the scope is fixed if you want to change anything in your scope it has to go through proper proper 
change control procedure. Proper change control procedure is needed to change anything in the scope baseline. No change is allowed in the scope baseline. If client tries to act without going through proper change control procedure, it is called scope creep. Client tries to add anything without going through proper change control procedure. It is called scope creep. And if you give more than what was added, what was in the scope baseline, it is called gold plating. Scope creep is more from the client side. We are trying to do gold plating. You are giving it without even requesting. Both are not allowed. It's an important thing. And then, do you remember in quality we discussed, uh, let's say, uh, deliverables when made, it first goes to control quality. And with the client check it according to quality management plan, we discussed it in the quality topic. If the, it is approved by the quality team, it becomes verified deliverable. Verified deliverable. In scope, the client check. If the client say, okay, this deliverable is according to scope baseline, you get validated deliverable or accepted deliverable. <laughs> validated deliverable or accepted deliverable. Please remember, client check in the validated scope process according to scope baseline, not according to quality plan. Team check, internal check is according to quality plan. So what put in the chat box, what is the difference between verified deliverable and validated deliverable? I would like to know. So this is all about scope. You need to know. I hope that makes sense to you. Now we have covered stakeholder, communication, team, agile, scrum, risk, quality, procurement, scope. We are left with schedule, cost, integration, closing, and then maybe we'll take it some tips and tricks. I hope you are watching it, learning it. These videos are the most premium content in the entire world, and I'm giving it to you. I really want that you become certified PMP and you don't even have to read any book. But if you are among those people who love to read the book, this book is available in Amazon, in Pakistan in hard form, uh, in India in Amazon, Saudi in hard form, you in hard form, everywhere it is available. And if you don't want to read hard form, I can give you soft form. It is like minimum possible price for it right now. Get that book. And if you haven't taken the training, you want to join our program, go to my name, email, whatever the, the link is there. Come here. Let's walk into that and let me help you to become PMP. We are approaching 1500 PMP as we are either recording this on 20th of March 2024. In last three and a half years, we are reaching 1500 PMP. I want to help you. Please join the program so that I can help you in that. I want to take this thing further so that you become PMP, PGMP. RMP, you get a better jobs. I have thousands of success stories to share with you how those people are done. Let me help you to do that. And for, for sure, if you are new here, you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe so that you can keep coming, keep coming and keep learning. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.